let's get started then yeah welcome everyone to the devcon day two and yeah we are in the application development and the containerization track and we have with us today khalid and michael and hujo would be presenting out the session over the life cycle of an api versioning and operators so please stay tuned and i'll be starting the record session mm -hmm. The agenda for today is, is going to be pretty quick. We don't have a lot of slides, uh, although we want to do is just kind of uh, glimpse over the, the current state of the product uh, and, you know, what, what we think we are right now. Uh, the, the architectures that we know uh, that are being used right now for tree scale and then the quick demo and then, you know, a quick uh, uh, time just to provide some of the challenges that we found do, uh, doing this. And then, you know, we can open for questions and, and any discussion or any feedback that you guys have. So we want to start with uh, just uh, setting up the premise that we absolutely uh, love the concept of API management uh, as code. We absolutely agree with the, the whole life cycle for the API manage, management as, as presented by the VU. Um, we, we really like some of these tools that, that you can see on the screen right now, and we've been playing with them. Um, but we want to uh, start getting a little bit more into specifically tree scale and how you actually take one service that already have your open API specs and how you integrate it in here and, and what are the, the good things that we found and what are the challenges that we found. So as you guys probably already know, we have a, a lot of three scale deployment options. The first one is the hosted, which I put up at Big X. Um, and the reason is um, I know that there are a lot of customers using this, but we think is is uh, probably the most challenging one where uh, it's it's hard to explain to some of the customers, I, at least based on my experience, um, the, the architecture of having the API gateway hosted or embedded within 3Scale, right? Uh, most of the, of the customers, they have the services in different clusters or in different ends, and you want to get your API uh, gateway as close to your service as you can. So as you get into customers with hybrid architectures with services in different places, then this becomes challenging. So all, all the other, we're fine with all the other uh, deployment options where we just have the gateways in some other places and, and you know, like Fuse, OpenShift, uh, on-premises and so on. We, we have no problem with that. Um, I will say that the reason we wanted to just quickly glimpse on, on this is because uh, we think right now, based on the current state of the three scale operator, and three scale, it's, it's uh, a little bit challenging to actually deploy Apicast. Even if you're self-managing your Apicast, there is a whole process uh, that you gotta engage into just making sure that the Apicast communicates with the API manager. So we, we found that yeah, a, a lot of customers, they just wanted to, you know, something simple that you can just put next to your service, and you want it to run and it's easy to configure and instead we have to go through the ui or the management api or the toolbox to try to do a lot of things like this and and it creates a challenge so um we decided that we wanted to tackle how can we improve this um, through the operator basically the idea is how how could we do that how could we take the operator and modify it so it would do the, you know, that, that reference architecture that Michael had up, you know, the API manager and the uh, self-hosted or, or on-premise uh, Apicast gateways, right? And the idea was to both change the custom resource definition and modify the operator to allow that. Uh, that's pretty much the gist of the the pro proposed solution. We also made some adjustments to the 
other custom resource definitions for creating an API, uh, metrics, mapping rules, uh, plans. The biggest changes were basically in the API. Um, and uh, uh, Michael, did you want to leave that for later or yeah, go into so, it now? So yeah, no, that, that's that's what I was looking on the operator side. But pretty much what, what we wanted to also incorporate, as the title said, is like what happens when you have your service and you already have a mature service that you are generating your own Swagger, your own open API spec through JSON, and then you want to you know, take all these versions uh, of your service. You already have a mature state where you're promoting your service through different environments. And then you want to actually update your API product definition on the API manager. And that's where we got to this point where we needed an easy way to not only use the CRDs uh, for the different resources like tenant, API metrics, bindings, and so on, but in an easy way that we can just quickly, you know, align with agile and uh, API management and code and, and CI CD best practices to just quickly recreate APIs and configurations that could be just quickly pulled uh, for the different applicasts in different environments, uh, like in a pipeline, right? So going back to our, our initial uh, loop, uh, what happens when you already have a service that you wanna promote version 1.0, 2.0, and then you gotta go back to the API manager and do all the mappings and do all of this, either by the toolbox or the management API. Um, we're, we're, you guys, uh, we're gonna dig into a little bit more into exactly what happened in versioning. We're still working on that, but we wanna show you what we have right now in terms of how this will be aligned like into a Jenkins pipeline uh, using the CRDs of the modified operator. So, um, this is uh, a quick uh, demo uh, architecture. So uh, it, it's not a pretty diagram, but it's just to quickly expose what we wanted to do. And what we present here is just uh, something that it may be uh, familiar to some of you guys. We just have different uh, namespaces or projects where you just have your service. Um, we just call it dev, UAT, and prod. And then as I mentioned before, you want to be able to uh, automatically deploy uh, gateways to each one of your uh, namespaces where you have your services to keep in close to your service. And then what we have is an API manager uh, in a multi-tenant mode where at the same time that you do the configuration for where do you want your applicast, we're also creating the tenants that you want for them. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but you, when you usually do this by hand, you need to, after you get your API manager deployed, uh, you need to go and create your tenants. Then you need to use some of the tokens and create secrets and use the template, or if you're using the Applicast operator, then deploy the, the specific gateway in the target destination. And then you need to go back and forth a bunch of times and then expose the service of the gateway, get the route, then go back to the API manager and do all these things. So what we did is we actually modified the operator and the way that it deals with the CRD is so specifically, uh, one of the main challenges that we found is that the operator right now only works in one namespace. So the default operator was only gonna be able to actually deploy the operator in one namespace and the same namespace for the API manager and the tenants. So we modified this and now our customized operator can deploy the API manager to the namespace that we want. Uh, we have a different namespace where the operator lives, different namespace where the API manager lives, and then we can define where we want the tenants and the whole configuration is done automatically. Then uh, through the modification of the other CRDs, we'll, what we're doing in the pipeline is using what we call a template called create API that a certain portion in the pipeline, we go and actually create an, a specific API definition under an, a specific tenant uh, for, the, for the API manager. And then we just do a basic curl just to test uh, that the service is working. 
so it's 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 not fancy it's just a way to show okay uh, are we actually being able to expose um the 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 gateway the way that it is are we actually being able to uh access the service through the gateway using the the user key that was another challenge that we found uh, we modified the operator so we can generate the secrets that we need with the specific user keys that we need to access the api definitions right right now there is no crds for that so we have to kind of do a hackish way on how to create the services uh that sorry the secrets in the actual api manager so we can access them through the pop-up so that's just a quick intro of the architecture of the demo and then uh now we're on demo time so let me let me bring this screen i have all of this i apologize for all the tabs so this is just a uh, OpenShift cluster uh, version 4.2, if I'm not mistaken. And what we did, uh, by the way, is just a combination of um, some scripting, uh, the modification of the operators, but also we're using the Ansible applier for creating a lot of the resources we needed for the services. And then, uh, we're just using uh, the old technique for a uh, build configuration pipeline just to deploy the services in in the actual um, different namespaces. So yeah. uh, for, go ahead, Alan. Uh, as I say, as you can see, we've separated out, um, right, like Michael mentioned earlier, the three scale operator, uh, the current version that is the official version works only within one namespace, but we split it out there's a namespace for the operator. There's a namespace for the API manager. And we have a namespace for each of the API CAS gateways, API dev, prod, and UAT. And that way, uh, you get a kind of more realistic separation. Yeah. Obviously, if you have different clusters, it's going to have to work a little bit differently. And that's when the, that, the API CAS operator could fill that gap. Uh, but for a lot of, uh, customers and a lot of people, the, just having everything in one cluster is enough because they don't need that uh, complete separation or, you know, they share a lot of resources between different teams. So this would help them get up and running uh, a lot quicker. Yeah, and and obviously, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are thinking, well, what if, uh, you know, there is non-prod and prod uh, clusters? There are different clusters. Yeah, we're, we're not there yet, but uh, everything was designed with the view of being able to just access the operator in a way that you can just target what are the namespaces. So uh, the next step is to actually work with different clusters. But as of right now, we have everything within, within just one cluster. The ideal scenario in the future will be to actually continue working on this so we can just have something like non-prod lower environments and prod upper environments. So just a quick walkthrough of what we have right here. Like I said, a lot of these resources are created by the applier. We're just using the Ansible OpenShift applier playbook. Um, we are we have a service, and let me just switch quickly here to code. Um, and we're going to share this this uh, this uh, repo in a few. But pretty much what we have is we have a service that already have um, uh, an open open API spec. So it's a simple um, Spring Boot service. Uh, it's just called Person, and it already have it, it already provides the the Swagger definitions for everything that we need. Um, and then what we have is a different uh, repo. that's called the CI/CD repo. Uh, uh, sorry, a CI/CD folder where we have everything from the applier to different templates that we're using uh, uh, that access the the resource definitions. And uh, so, in each one, when we uh, provision the operator, the operator then is going to provision that. Then our scripts are going to provision the API manager, and then in the API manager, we have a configuration where we have 
um, the specific, um, how is it called, the, the specific uh, target environments that we want. So we create the different objects that we need, and then through the provision of the API manager, we provide the different apicasts, and then we use the tenant custom resource definition to create a tenant for each one of the namespaces that we want. Um, then also using the applier, what we do is in each one of the target namespaces, API dev, UAT, and prod, what we have is uh, the service. And uh, like I said, this, this service uh, is just a service that is uh, doing a, a person and then we are doing versioning through the the URI. So we do something like person slash v1.0 slash one. And in the same namespace, we have the Apicas. And as soon as we uh, get the Apicas provision in the target namespaces, then we create the routes. And that's how we configure by the way the API manager. So, Finally, we have another namespace that is called the API CICD, and it's just a Jenkins ephemeral with a, a basic um, a pipeline, the old fashioned way. Uh, we're gonna have, you guys are gonna see a lot of builds because we were just testing it, uh, some of the changes that we recently did. Um, but pretty much what this pipeline does is what I have over here. Um, it's a simple pipeline that is just check out the, the service from the same Git repo. It builds it, it creates an image out of it, uh, you know, just using a basic star build. And then we just promote this different, the, the service from dev, UAT to prod uh, through the environments by just doing an open shift tag. Um, here, is, here are the key points. So when we get to configure the three skill tenant, uh, what we do is we actually use one of the templates that we have that is called create API and we pass some of the uh, uh, parameters that we need for for this template and pretty much the template uh, create API it's a template where we use the custom resource definitions defined by the operator but this time you know it's a the modified operator so the way that you do it is we have CRDs for metrics, we have CRDs for mapping rules, we have CRDs for plans, and then we have the CRDs for the API, where we can just pass the private uh, URL, the, the public URL, and then the key of making this work, there is a CRD called binding that pretty much binds, as its name says, the, everything that is just through the API selector uh, API label. So then you can just get this into all the different tenants um, and, and uh, test your service. So uh, before the promotion gate, uh, after we, we create the specific API, what we're doing is just getting the secret where we have the user key, and then pretty much we're just uh, waiting what we're doing a, a loop to just do a curl on the specific public base URL using the key on the header just to make sure that it's working and then we have promotion gates to uat and it does the same and we have promotion gates to to prod so uh Halle, do you have anything else that you think we we got to mention uh no we can touch upon it later uh, uh, when we talk about the challenges and and what do we have to do all right so here is the master um, we're not, we're going to provide a video where we did, where we do the whole provisioning of this, uh, as you guys can and, uh, see. We'll... Yeah, say, unfortunately it takes anywhere between uh, 10 to 30 minutes. Uh, so we didn't want to spend 30 minutes. Everyone kind of just watching pods come up. <laughs> exactly. So, so, um, Unfortunately, the, the demo that we're gonna show today is just running the pipeline and showing you guys how all this gets exposed. Um, but but the provisioning, even though that the CRDs get created, there, there is a whole work between the operator and, and the API manager, and it takes a lot of time. And, so, 
and we'll send a video so that you guys can fast forward through the boring parts. All right. So here in the master um, in the master console, we have the three different tenants, and they're just regular tenants uh, we created through uh, using the tenant CRD. They have nothing fancy. It's just a tenant with an admin user, and then we have each one of the different tenants. So this is the dev tenant, this is the UAT tenant, and then this is the prod tenant. And what we do here is just uh, when we run the the the, ten the creation of the tenants, then what we do is uh, we wire everything uh, related to the applicants automatically using the operator. So let's just run the pipeline. And while this gets started, um, the uh, we're going to go through all the sections of what we found as challenges. Uh, but the idea here is that we can just run a pipeline, as I showed before on the code, uh, where we can just get a service and just, you know, part of your uh, provisioning of your service, you can just define where your open API spec is. And then we're still working on mapping properly. As of right now, it's just one specific route that is being mapped. But um, we're working on, on, on trying to figure out how to make the operator uh, take the open API spec and, and then based on that, actually create the mappings. So that's, uh, we found some people supporting this idea and and we think that should be the direction to go, right? If you guys go to the operator hub, there are different operators that they have different maturity. And we really think that we shouldn't have every time that we configure an API, we shouldn't have to go to the API manager and go and adjust um, different mappings or, you know, do, do the specific way Freescale wants to do the, the URI yeah. versioning and all of that. I, I don't think we should have to do that. We think there should be an operator that we can just uh, pass, hey, here is my open API Swagger spec. Just take it and you do all the mapping, do all the response codes, do everything for you. And in addition to not being able to use the open API spec out of the box right now. Uh, another thing that's lacking is while well, you can create an API mapping rules, plans, and, and put it all together, uh, to, to actually make use of your API, you need to map it to an application within Freescale. And since that part is not available as a CRD, uh, that means you can't use the CRD to actually create your API and your application and start using it right away. You need to either go into the three skill UI to create that application, map it to the API, or use other things such as the toolbox, and, and that kind of breaks the uh, uh, what's what's it called the the let's say the the illusion of uh, of you know that CI/CD. If I can create it with the CRD for you know creating the API, why can't I start using it right away? So that was something else we, we changed to, it was a little bit opinionated. We basically said each API has one application. We're just gonna automatically map it so you can start using it right away. Um, obviously that leaves some room for improvement, but yeah, at least for now it's functional. So, uh... Here, as you guys can see on the pipeline, we just run the template where we just create the, the APIs. So on the on the dev tenant, we're gonna have, it's gonna keep on creating more, but we're, we're gonna have the, um, the actual API definition already presented. And, and then what it's gonna do is it's already gonna promote it and everything, the integration and everything is already set up. Uh, the back end is set up based on, on the parameters that, that we're passing. So we're just using the, the local uh, cluster local service of the service that we provision using the pipeline too. Um, and then the mapping rule, as I mentioned, is just a static 
uh, mapping rule as of right now. Uh, we run into a lot of problems actually trying to get the service discovery. Uh, sometimes the service discovery will actually auto discover and create the mapping rules, but they, they wouldn't create it properly. Um, so then uh, we can, uh, we have the validation of the service where we actually go and just, we just have a loop where we just curl the public uh, Apicast, and then we pass the user key that we got from the secret. And then we have the same over here on UAT, and then we have fraud. There you go. Um, as you guys can see, there there's still a lot of room for uh, for improvement. Uh, we we have a lot of problems uh, trying to get uh, the proper secrets updated in the proper uh, namespaces. Uh, three scale right now is really opinionated where this needs to be and and how it needs to be how how it needs to be managed. But pretty much uh, what we're doing is uh, the we're, the reason we're uh, you guys saw in the pipeline that we're making it wait is because even though that we're processing the, the CRDs through the template and we're creating them, we need to give it a time uh, to actually create the secret that we need in the API manager so we can access the different keys. So here you can see the specific name, the user key, and then the name of the service, and then the actual binding. So this is for dev, this is for prod, and this is for UAT. And you can see that this is the value of the actual devs um, application. And as you can see, well, we create a bunch of applications every time we run the pipeline and different uh, tenants. Uh, but for dev, this is the key. And back here, you can see that it's the same number. So we're just getting, all that we're doing is through the CRDs and the operator, we're just creating a secret in, in the API manager namespace. So we can just, through the pipeline, we can just get it and use it. Right, uh, so uh, troubleshooting was, a, any of the changes were a, a bit difficult just because it was, it was a little tough to figure out what was going on with three scale specifically the number of configuration options what uh, why the operator did things a certain way initially what how that maps to if you were to deploy the template say te a template manually instead of using an operator uh, so that that took a little getting used to and took a little trouble the there are some components that don't survive a cluster restart well and uh, we're still looking into why that is and whether there's anything that can be done about that. And, you know, we expect them to survive node restarts, but it may just be a limitation that the, the whole cluster going down may not be healthy for any of the three scale components to begin with. Uh, a little trouble with uh, the Jenkins ephemeral getting up and running. Some of the custom resource definitions, uh, they lack completeness. Like we mentioned earlier, you can create an API, mapping rules, plans, but you cannot use that to create an, an application or, uh, there's, you know, or, or other resources that you need to you know, get complete use of the three scale API. And the first thing we actually had to go and change was that the operator does not support clusters that don't have a read write many storage option. And that was the initial change we made to allow it to, even if you use the uh, reduced resource configuration, it still requires uh, read write many uh, for some PPCs and that limits you to clusters that basically have like NFS or Azure storage or you know any of the other uh, read write many storage options which actually is not usually the case you know if you provision something in our HPDS it's not going to have it if you use the default uh, openshift installer in AWS it's not going to have it either so that really limits the places where you can run this operator all right um so before we go to questions and some feedback, uh, this is what we have in mind for future work. 
Uh, we really want to keep on enhancing the operator for you know day two or day three oper uh, operations. Uh, we really think the operator should be uh, in a combination with the service auto discovery, the way to actually uh, define your API uh, based on the open API specs. So, so we really think instead of using the toolbox, instead of using the management API, like all of these are great tools uh, when you need to do other things. But, but when it comes down to like just aligning with, with your uh, just normal DevOps of your service, you need something else that, that can create this for you. So we, we really want to get to a point that we can actually properly import the open API specs and do all the mappings based on that. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yep. All right, I just put on the chat the uh, public GitHub uh, for this uh, demo. And my partner, Alec, he just put the, the actual part for the operator. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Obviously, as you can see, it's a work in progress. Um, last time that we checked, um, we didn't find in the latest release, the, the three scale, we didn't find any big changes regarding the operator. So I think as we, as an industry move towards, you know, API contract first and API as code, uh, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure this will be more relevant efforts. Let us know if you have any questions. Alec, do you want to say anything else? Uh, nope, you, you pretty much covered it. Does my audio sound all right? Sound like a rock. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. How about now? No, sounds like it's still bad. It does. Uh, I think all right. I think I don't see any of the questions popping out in the chat box. So yeah. just. We'll be winding up this session, and I thank Khalid and Michael for taking out the time and doing this uh, wonderful presentation. We have the next lined up session over the improvements in the OpenShift Python S2I, which would be taken over by Fred Olin at 2.30 p.m. So stay tuned and join our break breakout room. Meanwhile, if you want to have any of the questions, uh, Khalid and Michael would be available there. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah. Have a Thank nice you. day. Bye-bye.